Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm okay. very happy to introduce you to a very fast forward relaxation session. <laughs> okay. If you pay attention fast, you will relax fast, and after 15 minutes, you may be so bored, you feel so um, loaded with information. It all starts not with the idea to create a new spa attraction, it started with the desire to play music with wild whales. This kind of sounds was what really excited me most. And we had this great guy, an uh, American musician, Jim Norman, who came and felt humans and whales meet in the water when they have a common ground, a common sound, and a common technology. So we have hydrophones in the water, the whales come by and make these wonderful sounds. We sit on a boat and plug our guitars, or sing, or rattle, or freak out, or do whatever. Mm. We are very happy that there are no scientists around to tell us this isn't real music, this isn't intercommunication, no, this is just chance sounds from the years and their end. We loved it, and as I was part of one of these excursions, I realized this is the stuff I want to be involved with. This is the kind of communication that I feel excited by, and because this was happening in the North Pacific off the coast of British Columbia, North Canada, jumping in the pool was not a good idea, it was not wellness, it was too cold, so I professed to try to invent something that would communicate the idea of interspecies music, of communication with the natural world, and make it palatable and accessible to ordinary humans like you and I. So, a few years later, you have this situation in the pool of uh, Bad Orb, which is the one that I tease you now with showing. This is the politically correct body posture of people in the liquid sound pool. All they have to do is do nothing. The salt content gives the body uh, the buoyancy. You don't have to struggle against dr drowning. Is this salt content natural again inside, or is this... Uh, it's, he, here it's enhanced, and it's, uh, it's about 3.5%. Okay. That's enough to keep the body afloat. Mm -hmm. It's not like in the Dead Sea. In the Dead Sea, you are uh, like a cord floating on top. But we want to immerse, which means we just have our natural snorkel sticking out. That's enough. And the rest of the body is in, in wrapped, enraptured, covered with the water. And you realize immediately why this is so excitingly relaxing for people, because you just look at it and you know this is something that the body demands to have. And the beauty for us is to be able to create stages. Liquid sound can be described by the technology, but that's peripheral. Basically, it's a stage that opens for performances and experiences that you bring in. And we can have the very gentle experiences like uh, Mosia describes, a very intimate wellness spa, luxurious experience and you can have wild raves you come to one at a time but this is the, the, the building that was designed to allow for a open your mind open your heart let your body just indulge in nothingness and the, the thing that um, irritates most architects is why do you need this enormous amount of wasted space? What a waste of energy to heat it. Why not just do it flat and then, well, I tell you, you <laughs> I got this. I love your immediate response. No, no. You need this kind of um, openness to open your mind, even when you close your eyes. You know that there is, it's like in a cathedral. Why, why do cathedrals have this? open, wasted space, because that allows you to have a spatial experience of um, you're not alone, the world goes higher than the tip of your nose. And um, so, back to my story. Basically, I'm doing storytelling to tease you to get into the business mode later. Mm -hmm. um, when I come back from... Um, um, 
Northern California um, and, and British Columbia. I hired a spa place, not a spa, a public pool in Frankfurt, and we got the avant-garde musicians together, and it was absolutely amazing. People didn't know what it was. The technology was lousy. We just have very flimsy underwater speakers, those that the whales heard just a couple of months earlier. <laughs> And it got people excited, and it got me on a new track in my life. Before that, I was just a traveling uh, bohemian writer and musician. And now all of a sudden, I had to learn about hydroacoustics and how to design liquid sound events. And um, so, this is in 1986. Most of you weren't born yet at the time. And and this is how it looks. Oh, yeah. So oh, 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 this oh, is oh, wasn't wasn't it cute. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, we had a, a dancer, a new dancer. She she was a Lufthansa stewardess, oh, yeah. and she yes. was down in the pool. So this was this. I think you've seen the two spirit forces that uh, motivate me to do this. It's really an intimate, blissful experience in the water. It has wide range in the water, and it is just water in a new dimension. So, enter a new phase in my life. I met Maren Schneider. Now this is again, this is 30 years ago, and she still looks the same. <laughs> Her husband is Pasi and they opened this clinic in the Far East, and they heard about me, we got together and teamed up, and lo and behold, we created the first liquid sound pool that was opening in uh, November 9th, 1993. And um, so the headline says, this clinic syndrome lets the whales sing. And this mythical story and the, the truth of, this, of the initial story of this is about humans and whales communicating, I never fail to tell the story, even when it comes down to the nitty gritty. Uh, it, it, I feel the, the mission to include this in the rap. And all of a sudden we had uh, photo artists from New York, Linda Triller, who captured the amazing otherworldly, otherworldliness of the liquid sound experience with the ear that's floating in hyperspace and the body that is levitating into hyperspace, as you can all see. Now, a lot of political stuff had to follow to design, to uh, apply for being part of the expo. And um, then building started, as you can see, the building started really, the, the, the builders were really fast. <laughs> Specifically for you to get into the pool in time, mm -hmm. the first liquid sound opera house mm. was constructed, designed, but it all started with the idea that this is dedicated to an experience where the ear that's floating in water is the key element. That is the prior the top priority. If that's if that starts, if if, if you give your architects this um, message then they come up with these beautiful structures, as you can see, a piece of art for all. Um, some people noticed all of a sudden in former communist East Germany a UFO has landed. <laughs> Many people were skeptical that this would be um, financially viable, but we wouldn't be here and expanding if it hadn't been that. So. Sometimes being daring and visionary can be the best business option that you have. And I was very thankful and happy to be meeting Mary and her husband, who were really dedicated to create this dream on a substantial business model and not just as a one-night stand event for white bohemians somewhere. Um, that happens inside this room, you see? It's not that we exclude this. No, we have, we have it here. So this is the ambient that happens. And if you're an ethnographer, like Margaret Mead or something, and you study people's behavior in the pool, come to our pools and you realize the behavior of people here is radically different to what people do or not do in other kind of spa 
or a pool in this. So they just float there. They look up. And looking up means you can't have a ceiling like this. It makes you crazy. So we have to make sure that what you see in your eyes, in your dream eye, matches what you hear in your dream ear that's floating in the water. So the media were friendly to us, the New York Times came, spa business, they all um, realized that this is quite uh, something. Uh, Marilyn gave, gave a talk at a music uh, therapy um, conference, but it all comes down to the very demonstrable fact that sound affects the water in a very tangible way. Sound affects the body, the mind, but you can also show that any kind of vibration that, is, uh, that the water is exposed to has a visual correlate. So um, this is a kind of kinetic scene that shows you this is what happens to the water. These structures are formed in the water as you are exposed to the sounds in the water. Um, that's why it's sometimes helpful to close the eyes in the water because then you may associate yourself with this kind of structure and sound. Um, yes. Floating in war, highly oh, sounding in water, you have yeah, nothing to do but just lie back and enjoy the dreamlike yeah, sounds yeah, and yeah, colors. Yeah. Continue. We're still wondering why it's not in every corner in California or China or whatever. It's just in these places here, but we love it. We expanded to Bachando um, and we went into a very specific novelty that is a dome projection above the pool, a curved projection screen. Planetarium like, not quite yet, but in introducing the, um, the dome structure and also giving visual input. For the bathers. Now, this is where we are here. This is Toscana Therma Bad Orb. Um, the building process was even faster here than it was in Bad Uh They worked their butts off to get the uh, thing completed in time. But you see, this is the, the wonderful wood architecture, which is basically what is preferable if you work with salt water, which we do. Wood is much better than any other material as a building. Um, for the construction, okay? You've seen the liquid sound, the, uh, the, the liquid bodywork in the liquid sound temple. Um, this is one of the more intimate, more exclusive sessions that you can get, but it's not the only one. Um, and by the way, one million people came after four years of operation here in Baron. That was quite a success. Um, one thing that is very dear to my heart is the performance part. Now, as I said, liquid sound, well, yes, there's the equipment, but basically it's like you have a movie projector and you have a, you have a movie theater. Who wants to come and admire your movie projector? That is not what people come for. They come for the experience that the film communicates. So. This is why I have the wonderful job of being a cultural director of a spa. Because my job is to bring content to the spa. Mm -hmm. To bring a variety of um, performances, of concerts, of events to the, to the environment. To keep coming back to the spa attractive for people who come regularly. And to make it attractive for people who usually never come to a spa. If the music crowds, if you get the music crowd to pay for your um, spa event, they, they are as good as any other client. But they bring a different kind of crowd that you don't have in the 
ordinary wellness um, um, institutions. So we have dance, we have music, live music of all instruments of all styles, and there's a whole list of um, videos that I can send to you if you like, and then you can at home watch them. And we are now in the process of including another element that is the element of the aquatic planetarium mm -hmm. to have a situation where the water is for the eels, but the dome on top includes the most advanced protection technology that's available now, which is called full dome. Um, most planetariums switch to digital phone projection. I'm very happy that um, I could initiate um, uh, the photo festival and get many young artists into uh, um, getting in touch with the visual wonders in a 360 degree world. As a diver, if you are any diver, you know there is no up and right, it is always surround. And in the pool, we reflect this and we bring in the uh, liquid sound full on as the new element in pool design. So whenever there is a new design in the debate, I would suggest go for this one. What's the diameter of the minimum diameter? This one would be about 12 meters. Diameter? Yes. But any size would, would work fine. Um, so these are the ones just to go through that um, oh maybe we can show you that um, if this allows me to sh tell you <coughs> okay there's we have a wonderful yeah, yeah, 360 yeah. degree um, website that goes with the uh, VR glasses, that goes with planetariums. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we are in this element, I'm, I'm teaching uh, immersive media at Bauhaus University in Weimar, so all these young <laughs> nerds, I get them to love the water and the dough, mm -hmm. and so they provide us with great uh, content also. So this is a very ongoing thing. There's an artistic endeavor that pushes the spa world. So, um, have you done hey, that was, uh, I did this three more minutes and I promised. Yeah. I'm not, oh, there. finally, okay, here it is. So, just look at it and um, so this is the kind of thing I mean, rain is a little rain, but it's what's happening when you open the thermal bath consciously to a cultural and artistic and amazing experience that goes on and on and on. It's not that after two hours you go home, it's maybe that after two hours you go on a deck chair and fall asleep, mm -hmm. and when you wake up you see people standing in the pool making these funny movements um, and so we have it uh, on, on all the three Toscana terrors we have this uh, in a parallel mode so um, it's quite a quite a job to coordinate three festivals simultaneously that go on from Friday over Saturday and Saturday into uh, Sunday morning but we love it, and when Saturday, the, the widest part is um, Sunday morning after like two, three a.m., and everybody is kind of half dissolved, like the images that Lucia show. And then the music gets very different. Even the hardcore DJs suddenly become very, very celestial in their sounds, and uh, so people who come in and out of the festival usually um, come out different. <laughs> so it is like a, a weekend transformative event. But you leave it to the performers to choose the music. You don't well, I choose music. the performers, yeah. um, <laughs> of course. 
and I have a sense of which performance in what sequence in what part of the night would really work well. And usually we've been quite quite successful with getting people excited uh, in different ways. You see, you have this um, guitar player, and you have uh, oh, you have. How, how many people can you accommodate in a festival like this? So how, how many people can fit in a festival like this? How many people can come? Oh, as much as the, the, the place holds. Uh, we have about 400, 400 in each of the spots. Sometimes there are lines, and sometimes uh, people have people wait for someone to get out in order to have a free uh, locker room. And of course, the whole thing with uh, projection and music and performances of different kinds is a theatrical challenge. So this is not what this is not what the liquid sound machine does by itself. But you need the liquid sound hardware in order to get all these performances made available for um, for people. So I'm curious. They're playing above the water, and then so it gets piped into the water. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Except that only 400 people can experience. Well, um, no. <laughs> Times three means about a thousand uh, in three places. Also, we do a live stream. We live stream the event, so um, there you can watch it. So if, if you, for some strange reason, if you if you're not here and for the for the fifth festival, you can watch it over live stream. That's good. Put it here in the And uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, actually, right. actually, we, have, we, have we need a the liquid sound machine. Though. You, you, you're from, uh, you are from uh, LA, you said. Uh, yeah, it's not like okay. California. You see, um, we have a good friend, Kelly Francis, who will be here for the festival. She was in LA last time, and she actually she put the, the computer in front of her in the, in the bathtub um, and watched it and yeah. sent through Facebook, sent the images of her LA bathtub watching the performance. Now, this is the best one. These are five singers from uh, Russia, <clears throat> St. Petersburg. They go right physically in the pool. And sing. So it's yes. For some electronic music, we need the the, the 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 technology, but we also have musicians that go physically in the water and assemble people in the, in the water. What do you what do you charge people to come to this festival? Actually, this is ridiculous. It's a, it's a thirty six euro for a double ticket, which means in the time of the festival, which is Friday until Sunday morning, they can enter exit twice or stay there without ever going out. And how many tickets are available? Um, for some strange reasons, we, we never had to send someone away. Those who got the, the, the tickets, they get priority access in, in, the, in the thing. 